guys what's going on thought I'd do a quick uh, video on a couple rifles that I've put together recently uh, they are one of them is the Palmetto State Armory Freedom Rifle Kit uh, mid-length gas system with a 1 and 7 twist and then the other one we've got here is a uh, is also from Palmetto Star State Armory it's a 1 and 7 twist with a carbine length gas system a little different upper receiver as well we'll go over that and uh, both the guns are clear unloaded took the whole bulkier group out of both of them so that way we got nothing to worry about there all right uh, first we'll go over uh, the lower receivers are made by Anderson manufacturing I bought those here at a local gun store um, for 60 70 bucks a pop uh, and then the uh, first one I built was this one here. Like I said, it's the 1 and 7 Twist uh, Freedom Rifle Kit from Palmetto State Armory. Uh, I went with the mid length gas system and the uh, Magpul MOE furniture. Uh, it's my preference. I liked it a little bit better. Paid a little bit extra for it. Uh, this kit was $449. And then, like I said, 60 or 70 for the lower so you got 5, 10, 520 into it there. Uh, this kit went together really well. The parts all fit smooth. The triggers nice and smooth. Um, had no issues with it whatsoever. They, then this other rifle here is the PTAC or PTAC line that Palmetto State Armory has. Um, this lower is also an Anderson manufacturing. I like the rifle there. Uh, but this is the less expensive line. I think I paid somewhere 349 or 399 for the rifle kit on this one. It just comes with your basic AR furniture, um, and it is also one seven twist. This one did not go together quite as well as the Freedom line. Uh, the fit and finish on the parts of the, the Freedom line seemed to be a little bit better, uh, a little closer to spec. The tolerances were better. This one, the takedown pins, did not want to go in and out of the receiver smoothly. Um, I had to take some emery cloth and, uh, and smooth them out. And it works pretty well now. Um, I mean, you can pop them out, no problem, now that we've had it for a while. This rifle is, gonna be, is for my wife, and so I wanted to try to stay as lightweight as possible with it. Um, so I went with the slick-sided receiver. There's no Ford Assist, there's no brass deflector, there's no dust cover. Makes the rifle a little more simple. You probably shed a few ounces. Um, I don't know exactly, but it sure can't hurt. She likes it. I don't think it's anything that she is ever going to miss there. It makes it a little bit more simple. There's less things to worry about on it. Um, the mags, I've run P mags and hex mags through both of these. Uh, they fit great in the mag well. They don't stick or jam up or anything like that. Uh, like I said, this one didn't go together quite as smoothly. Uh, and it seemed really tight once I got it together. After putting some rounds through it, though, uh, it runs great. Had no issues. And it feels really good. Um, the black finish on the upper receiver is a little darker looking. A little shinier than the finish on the lower receiver. Because they are made by different companies. Not anything we're worried about. Um, I might do a camo job on this one. Kind of like I did here. Uh, this is my rifle. And I did a camo paint job with uh, Rust-Oleum. Their camouflage paint. They've got it in tan, green, and brown. I laid down a base layer of tan. And uh, put a couple base layers on it. Took some leaves and some grass and a couple and twigs from outside and just laid them down after I sprayed it tan and then I shot some brown over, shot some green over until I got the effect that I liked. I think it turned out pretty good and uh, really if you lay it down on the ground and some leaves and in the woods around here, it blends in really well. I was pretty impressed. Um, I did paint one magazine um, when I had the when I was painting the rifle, so it blends in with it. Uh, my optic on it is the Bushnell TRS-25 Red Dot. Um, I know tons of people use them. They're 
I'd say a great choice for an inexpensive red dot scope. Um, it's got 11 settings on power. I usually run it on 7 or 8. Uh, indoors, when I first received it, um, the dot looked a little bit blurry, but once you get outside and you're not looking at something really close, uh, it looks good. It's clear and crisp. Uh, I went with a um, magical flip-up rear sight, and I also went with the fixed front sight. I like to have a backup in case my optic uh, was to fail. I have not had any issues with this one yet, but I put the riser on it so that way my rear sight co-witnesses and I can look right through that red dot like it's not even there and use the iron sights if I need to. I went with just the basic sling. I ordered off of uh, Amazon, like 10 bucks or something like that. It came with uh, like a bungee clip on the end like this other rifle has on it. I took those off and just went with a straight regular sling. It's adjustable. I can put it just hang it on my shoulder or sling it across my back if I need to use both hands or uh, need to bend over or pick something up, anything like that. Uh, the rifle, like I said, runs really smooth. I shoot steel ammo. I get what I can get for cheap. Uh, I know some people are so against that, but in my opinion, for the savings, um, I can buy another barrel or buy a couple parts here and there if I do have any problems. But through both these guns, we've ran... Uh, Tool Ammo, we ran Wolf Military Classic, and uh, Monarch, which I believe is the same thing as Brown Bear. It's a lacquer coated stuff that I get at my local academy uh, sports sto store. And for the price, I can get that stuff for just as cheap almost as I can get online and not have to pay shipping. And it's just down the road and I can pick it up. And they've always got a lot of it, so that's what I've been doing. I'll shoot steel and, until I have a problem, and um, if I have a problem, then I'll just fix the rifle, because in my opinion, your rifle shouldn't be picky about what you're shooting, because in any situation, uh, you might not be able to get your upper upper grade brass ammunition. you got to be able to shoot what you can find and shoot what you can buy, so that's what I've been purchasing and running and had no issues with it whatsoever. Maybe clean your gun a little bit more often, but... Like I said, in my opinion, these guns, you shouldn't have to baby them too much. And you make them so they can shoot whatever you can get your hands on. Like I said, this sling here is what mine started out as with the elastic on the ends. Um, I just chose to take those pieces off. Uh, I just figured that might scratch the gun up, the metal clips, or uh, get caught or pinch on something. But... She likes it, so that's what we did. Um, trimmed off the excess, so that's not hanging around. But yeah, they're both really good rifles. As you can tell, this one has no optic on it right now. Uh, it's got the fixed front sight post. I'm going to put a uh, just a fixed rear sight on it, because that's what she decides she wants. We did have a uh, cheap red dot that we got off Amazon for something around $50. Uh, it had a a ton of reviews on it so I thought well surely it can't be too bad use it temporarily until we get something a little bit better well I was wrong there uh, after probably not even a hundred rounds uh, the lens on the inside you can see there completely fell down so it's useless now nothing but a paperweight uh, I don't know if they're gonna give me a refund or give me another one I'd really not I'd rather not have a new one have money back and get something a little bit better I'll at least go with another one of these Bushnells uh, or upgrade from there and find something else but I learned my lesson on buying off-brand stuff this is an Ozark Armament Rhino red green dot scope um, came with the mount I guess maybe it was worth a little bit to have the mount in case I want to use it for uh, something else but I prefer the size the simplicity and the lightweight of this actually um, like I said, on her rifle, I was going as lightweight as possible, so if we just put a, a fixed rear sight on there, I mean, I don't think, nowhere else we can save a whole lot of weight, maybe put some magpole furniture on it, but I know a lot of guys spend $2,000 on their, their firearm and another 1500 on their optic, uh, and we'd all like to do that, but sometimes that's just not in the cards, so for the, for the money we've got into these, 
I don't think you can go any better. If I were to do it all over again, I would get another one of the Freedom Kits as opposed to the PTAC or PTAC line. I just think the quality and the fit and finish on this was a little bit better. I personally like the Magpul furniture a lot better. Uh, just makes it stand out a little bit. I mean, I did the camo paint job on mine. Uh, everybody's got their own opinion, but I can tell it's mine. It's not like everybody else's. It does blend in a little bit better, and it, I guess to some people, doesn't look as scary because it's not a black rifle. Uh, and in both of them, I've used both these hex mags, which I got on Palmetto State Armory. I think I got a six pack for 49 bucks. I thought that was a pretty killer deal. Uh, so we've been running these, and I like them. And like I said before, they're a little bit different. Everybody runs the P mags of these. It's easier to identify that they're mine. You can get different colored uh, enters for them. So that way, if you have different different ammo, different loads, full metal jackets in one magazine, hollow points in another you can indicate it by what color it is. Um, the PMAGs are great too. Um, this is the Gen 2, I believe, PMAG. Um, I would definitely not be afraid to use either one. I just like the Hex Mags now, per personally. Um, other than that, that's about everything. Uh, like I said, Freedom Rifle's great. The PTAC even more inexpensive, uh, but the fit and finish just wasn't quite as good on that. Uh, I haven't had any problems shooting any kinds of ammo through them, and uh, yeah, great rifles. I'd recommend it. If you got any questions, uh, leave a comment. I'm planning on doing another rifle build, probably another uh, uh, Freedom Rifle kit, maybe do a key mod um, stock on it and uh, maybe put scope on it, not sure, just trying to do one of everything. Maybe have one with open sights, one with red dot, have another one with a scope, so that way we've got good home defense, and then also something else that if we want to reach out a little further, 100, 200 yards, uh, we've got some accuracy. So, yeah, if you have any questions, leave me a comment, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.